So the S&P 500 finally breaking above 5,000, closing above that level for, for the first time this week. But if you look underneath the hood, all is not well in S&P 500 land. Today, we're going to talk about the Hindenburg Omen. So the Hindenburg Omen is a classic uh, bearish indicator uh, created by a, a strategist named Jim Mieka years ago. And what he did was he looked back at major market tops to try to identify some consistencies. What are the, sort of those checklist items you look for that are signs that a market is overextended and ready for a major correction? Well, we had that signal, which is known as the Hindenburg Omen, initiated this week. We haven't seen one in a couple years. Today, we're going to talk about the Hindenburg Omen, what it is. I'll show you some historical examples of what has happened after this Hindenburg Omen has been confirmed at what it and what it means about the S&P 500 here going forward in the remainder of February into March of 2024. Before we get though, wouldn't mind if you like this video while you're here, if you like this sort of thinking about uh, market strategy, big picture analysis, and even micro analysis using technical analysis and behavioral finance tools, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, before we get to the charts, one more thing I wanted to tell you about. I've mentioned SeekingAlpha.com before on my channel. I wanted to let you know they have a brand new product they just released called Alpha Picks. Now, they're using that quantitative model that I've mentioned before. And a quantitative model is basically a statistical model that looks for the characteristics of winning stocks before they're really winning stocks and tries to look for those similar breakout candidates. One of the names, similar type of name that you'd be looking for with Alpha Picks would be Super Microcomputer, SMCI. Now, if you're familiar with this stock, the first half of 2023, incredibly strong. The second half of 2023, really a basing pattern, right? A big sideways pattern that it finally broke out to a new 52-week high in mid-January. That was around 350 a share. In the three weeks since, it's now over doubled. It's now over $700 a share. This is the type of chart. This is the type of company. This is the type of opportunity that Alpha Picks is looking for, that next big gainer uh, doubling in a short amount of time. If you go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Alpha Picks, you find all the uh, current promotion that they're running right around Valentine's Day gives you 50% off your first year of Alpha Picks. It's an affiliate link, so uh, gives you a better uh, a better deal than normal. Also uh, allows me to keep making market misbehavior awesome. So I hope you can check it out, and I wish you the best trying to find those next big winners. Go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Alpha Picks to check out that deal. Now let's get to the charts. So here's the S&P 500 with an incredible run from late October now to mid-February going from 4,100 to over 5,000. And here on Friday, February 9th, finally closing above that 5,000 level for the first time after teasing it earlier in the week, we finally did it. So what's interesting is, and I mentioned uh, previously, this trend line, this green trend line, I think is the most important trend line in the world right now, because what this does is basically quantify the pace of the uptrend, right? So, you know, uh, the ways you, you think about a market like this when it's had a pretty good run is number one, you just follow the trend. And that's what I would encourage you to do. If charts are going up, keep riding them higher. What you never want to do is sell something that's up 20% and leave another 200% on the table, right? Because you never, uh, because you didn't stick with your winners. So when a chart is making higher highs and higher lows, it's kind of the chart you want to be in. Now, if you look, this trend line is connecting the October low and the mid-January low. You can see that lines up beautifully with the low from late January. And from there, we remain above that upward trend. So, you know, quite simply, as long as we remain above this green trend line, I would say the conditions are quite positive, right? Even if you have choppiness and noise from day to day, as long as we hold that trend line, things just aren't getting that bad because that means we keep making higher highs and higher lows. What we can also do is look at breadth conditions. And we've talked about that here on the channel a number of times recently about breadth conditions that are less supportive as the S&P is powering above 5,000. A lot of individual names are not actually looking that way. The Hindenburg Omen is this chart right here. And basically what it is, it's a combination of essentially three different uh, uh, particular signals. And what it does is, uh, is basically I look for similar patterns to previous market tops. I'm highlighting here the uh, peak in late Jan excuse me, uh, late 2021, this peak from the first quarter of 2020. That's just before the uh, COVID drop. And then this third signal back here in mid-2019. 
Now, the indicator is down here at the bottom, and it's on stock charts, there's an indicator, exclamation point, B-I-N-Y-H-O-D, which actually combines these three indications into one signal. So if the indicator is at three, that means all three conditions have been satisfied. If it's down at zero, that means none of the three conditions are satisfied at a particular point. Now, I've highlighted a couple of these areas, which we'll get back to in a minute. So what is it, what is it actually trying to identify, this Hindenburg Omen? Well, I wanted to start with the simple visualization. Now we're going to get a little busier, but stick with me. I'm going to walk you through each of these items. I'm highlighting these same uh, three points, and we're going to go through the current conditions so you can see why this indicator was just recently triggered earlier this week. There are three pieces to this, and basically what Jamaica came up with was, number one, you need a market going up. Number two, you need uh, new highs and new lows, meaning there's some indecision. It's not just everything going up. There's actually a disagreement or an indecision. Some stocks going up, some stocks going down. The third item is the breadth has to rotate lower. So even though the trend is positive, the breadth actually starts to rotate lower. Here are the three conditions broken out uh, as separate indicators. And again, I don't, I'm not a fan of looking at these because it's just way too busy, but just so you understand the building blocks of the Hindenburg Omen, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. So number one, there are a couple ways you can do this. What we've settled in on, on is a 50-day rate of change of the New York Composite Index, which on stock charts is dollar sign NYA. So basically, you want to say that the, the NYSE Composite Index, which is a broad index of U.S. stocks, is higher today than it was 50 days ago or uh, 10 weeks ago. So you can see the fact that uh, this black series is the uh, rate of change. And basically, as long as it's above the zero line, the scale is actually way over here on the left. As long as that black line's above zero, condition number one is satisfied, which it has been for quite some time. Really, since late November, we've been, uh, you know, we've had a, a rate of change, a, a, a 50 day rate of change over zero, positive rate of change. Condition two, new highs and new lows both have to be over 2.8% of the New York Stock Exchange total of advancers and decliners. Now, what you have to remember, I mean, why 2.8%? This is what, you know, Jim years ago went through a bunch of tests and tried to look at the conditions and he found that this was a, con a consistent reality at major market tops, which is a little counterintuitive, right? You think like everything's going up. Maybe that is a sign of a market that's overextended. He actually found that 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 differentiation, right? That that um, disagreement between stocks, a bunch of stocks making new, new highs and a bunch of stocks also making new lows tells you that we're at a rotation rotational period, right, of indecision. So I've zoomed in a little bit here just because it's a little hard to see. And basically, as long as these are both up above 0 0.028, which would be 2.8%. So you can see a couple days ago here when we went below, uh, you know, negative uh, 0 0.028 down here in red, and you can see we went above 0 0.028 in, uh, in green, that satisfies that uh, second condition. The third option, you can see here at the bottom, we've kind of zoomed in to see uh, that's the point. The third item is the McClellan Oscillator has to go below zero. Now, we've talked about the McClellan Oscillator on this channel before. It is a very um, you know simple momentum gauge, to be honest with you, based on price breadth or based on uh, uh, advanced decline data, to be honest with you. And so when the McClellan Oscillator goes below zero, that means the short-term breadth is deteriorating because the advanced decline data is getting less bullish. So you have a market in an uptrend, you have uh, new highs and new, lo new lows in a meaningful number, at least 2.8%, and you have the McClellan Oscillator go below zero. When those three conditions are firing, this indicator, which I mentioned earlier, that ticker, uh, gets to positive three. Now, there's one final condition, which I don't really have automated on this chart, but I'll tell you about it, is he was very big on having multiple signals within a 20-day or really a 30-day period, if I remember right. So within a month, essentially, you have two separate indications. So you'll see a bunch of random, like, one-off things, right, where it just pops, and then that's it. And so that actually does not uh, uh, qualify as a valid Hindenburg omen. The Hindenburg omen occurs when you have multiple signals within one month. And so you can see here, that's why I've highlighted this area at the end of 2021. That's why I highlighted this cluster of signals in uh, uh, February of 2020. I highlighted this one in the uh, this, this set of uh, conditions in the summer of 2019. Now, you can see sometimes, of course, it doesn't guarantee that there's going to be a huge sell-off. And randomly, you'll find some Hindenburg Omen symbol signals that have not been particularly painful. But what you will also notice is really, and I'm not kidding, at most major market tops, and I'm talking, you know, February 2020, January 2022 kind of major tops, you'll find that the Hindenburg Omen has fired. And again, because these conditions just tend to repeat. 
So what's happened going back to the simple version of the chart? Well, we had one signal this week. We had the first signal since really April of 2022. That one was never confirmed. And to be honest, we were already in a pretty good downtrend by that point. So I don't know if it was it was super meaningful. The last time we've had a cluster of signals is here in the uh, fourth quarter of 2021. As we're making new swing highs, we start getting the Hindenburg Omen uh, firing and then confirmed by multiple signals within one month. We have had the first signal here this week, which means in the next three weeks, if we have another combination of those three factors, if this indicator gets back up to three, that would basically be one of the most significant, most successful major bearish uh, uh, signals that I've seen at major market tops occurring here in Q1 of 2024. So when you think about the market making new all-time highs with the S&P closing above 5,000 for the first time, when you think about the seasonally weakest uh, period of the year in an election year, which is right now the first quarter, particularly February and March, tend to actually be uh, relatively weak. The fact that we're seeing the Hindenburg Omen maybe starting to fire here suggests to me that 5,000 may be uh, limited upside beyond there, uh, uh, given the fact that we're starting to see these signs very similar to previous bull market tops. What do you think here about the Hindenburg Omen? Are you thinking downside or upside from here after the S&P has reached this incredible milestone? Let me know in the comments below what you see next for the S&P 500 and why. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Have a great one. We'll talk to you again soon.